Hey, what's going on everybody? Robert Marzullo here with Ram Studio Comics and I want to show you today um, a, uh, a lesson in how to produce thumbnails. So it's very important because it's basically where you start off when you create your comic um, and you should do your thumbnails are very important. Um, basically what the thumbnail allows you to do is work out some of the immediate details of the design without spending countless hours into the design. So we're gonna go ahead and take uh, like a you know basic plot or you know idea. Um, I'll just come up with something. Uh, you got your establishing shot which we'll say the establishing shot is of a cityscape. Okay so it lets you know uh, where your your story takes place. So that'll be our our main uh, shot up here and then we'll say that you are closing in on a character uh, walking down a street and you get an up close uh, shot of the character's face and they look somewhat surprised and then the final shot will be what they're looking at so what I'll do is I'll you know right now I'm kinda thinking about composition and how the uh, the panels might work out Get your establishing shot. This will be the shock panel, kind of offset from the other, breaking the uh, frame a bit, going outside of the bleed margin. And the very bottom one will be whatever they're looking at. So, and I'm just pulling this out of my brain box. This isn't a, an actual script, but you know, it's pretty much, you know, I'm sure it's been <laughs> scripts like that, or scenes like that, or pages like this. Have, been done a thousand a million times so uh, just just an idea to get it started so okay so establishing shot let's do a uh, bird's eye view and let's establish a perspective line like this and I use some very small lines oh, no, smaller than that to establish my perspective uh, concept here and we'll say that this is our street. And from there, we'll do you know some little sidewalks uh, where the buildings start to uh, line up. You know, an alleyway here. And you just and, and actually, I shouldn't even be doing it as straight as that, but that gives me my perspective line to start sketching some details. Uh, essentially, the thumbnail is just the real rough. Just you know, you might want to put some. Uh, hints to the way that you want your lighting and shadowing to work but mainly it's just placement and uh, some small details just to get an idea for what's going to you know, go on like for instance say uh, say we got a two lane street right here right and to really push that back further we'll do a close up right here of the edge of one of the buildings let's see what that so we come to a wall here. So now we're seeing the the edge and the corner of uh, one of these buildings. We're able to push this uh, perspective a little bit deeper with that. And since it's up closer, we're able to do a little bit more detail work right there. And this is kind of a bad example, but you do stuff like that to really, you know draw that perspective out like for instance right here uh, say if it was uh, appropriate it's not right here but you know putting a sign right here of what you know and, and that gives you another little level of detail um, you know and some something that you can draw that's cool right there and you know whatever so but you know you on that angle, I guess you possibly would still, still see a sign there because this could be a uh, four-way stop and stuff like that. But you start adding all your little details, uh, nothing too intricate because you don't want to be married to this and you don't want to spend a lot of time with your thumbnail. Um, honestly, putting in some of those details might even be a little bit much. Uh, but you know, say your character's here and you know they're running down the road. You know, and then you got to figure out: Is there, you know, a bunch of more characters in the scene? Is it night? And there's hardly anybody on the streets. Are there cars going up and down the road here? You know, and that's that's where you just start, you know, adding your 
what you call props basically adding your props into the uh, into the uh, page here so, and I like I said I like to always add my light sources as reference because part of what I'm doing here I generally try to build some shapes into my uh, my work you know composition wise so I might you know do like this and start clipping off and, and building some uh, deeper shadows to push certain parts and elements forward um, and then we get uh, you know down to this next scene and let's see we close up no. um, I can't remember what I explained here so we got the establishing shot it's in a city there's some you know some stores couple people not much not many um, on the sidewalk here and we'll say the next scene is let's say him you know looking up at him somewhat confused with the you know confused look on his face and we'll say it's an upshot and you know you're gonna have a script from your writer or if you're doing the writing um, you know, and, th and that's going to explain most of the time. Sometimes they'll leave it open and say, you know, hey, um, uh, it's just a shot of an up close of the actor's face. So you, you kind of pick uh, to what degree, or it'll be very specific, I guess, depending on the writer you're working with. Um, I've, I've worked with some that were just extremely vague uh, and let you kind of create the whole thing visually, which is, you know, a lot of times I think more uh, rewarding and fun, but uh, sometimes it, it is nice to get that very detailed script, though, and then you don't have to think about it as much. You can just rely on, you know, what images are popping in your head as you're, as you're reading it, and they give you a very descriptive, you know, um, I want to look up at this guy's face, and I want to see this. I want it to, I want his face to be darkly lit uh, for dramatization, and blah 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 so and I guess that you know finding the writer that works well with you and, and you guys interpret each other really well that's um, obviously essential you definitely notice that when you see a good comic book that's got a, uh, a good partnership from the writer to the artist and anchor and everything you know when they gel together really well then you definitely see that in the work you know, I'm like here, I would have started establishing, alright, what kind of haircuts this dude got, you know, what's he wearing here, because it's a, you know, a closer shot where I can start to uh, pinpoint a lot of that. You know, do you see some of the uh, buildings back here? Which way is he looking, you know, pinpoint the eyes. And then bam, I mean, that's that's good enough for a thumbnail, both those scenes, you know. Yeah, I could keep going and keep detailing and adding texture and bricks and lines and all that good stuff and shading. Um, but, you know, the idea of a, a thumbnail is to be quick, to lay it down. And then sometimes I'll do two thumbnails per page. And um, that'll tell me, you know, what I really want to... Uh, you know what I, what really comes out and what I guess by doing two thumbnails I give myself options and you know then I can look at both panels both pages of thumbnails and pick apart what uh, panels work the best you know and you could obviously you could do 20 sets of thumbnails but you know you got to be realistic about you know your deadline and what you're trying to do so And typically here you wouldn't do two, you know, up close shots. But I guess what I'm picturing here, and this wasn't scripted to be uh, really well done, um, is just like that dun dun. You know, like it, it comes in, you know, close up to the face, not too close, but then the extreme close up, and then more of the, you know, awestruck or fear or holy moly or whatever the whatever's going on here. I don't even know. We will find out when we get there.
about. I just figured I'd show you you guys that are interested in comics the initial process. You know, I think a lot of people that don't do comics think that you just go right in there and start uh, just just automatically drawing. And you know, you could do that, but you're only going to get semi decent effects uh, or results. It's very important to work out the details like this. Like I can already see things in this this uh, panel layout that I would change and, and add to and you know so it's very important to do those stages that help you interpret that help you uh, find the flaws and I think that's the the biggest reason that you do thumbnails and plus if you are working with somebody else uh, which you know nine times out of ten with comics you are uh, my my Blackstone Eternal comic I pretty much do by myself but um, you know, generally when you work with other people, you thumbnails are perfect to get a lot of the uh, the back and forth out of the way. You know, I, I try to always when I do other projects for other people, I try to always show them the thumbnails and go, "What do you think? What do you think?" And you know, sometimes they're like, "No, no, Rob, just do your own thing." And I'm like, "No, I, I really want to know what you think. I really want to get you know." Plus, I, I hate reworking stuff, and this takes a little bit of that out of the way. So. You just show them the thumbnails, get their opinion, and maybe somebody goes, hey man, this uh, this looks great, but tell you what, your light source is way off right here. What do you think about that? And I'm very open-minded, and, you know, it'd be like, cool, man, thanks for the perspective, you know, let's work on that. So I wouldn't get all offended and, you know, go, you don't know what you're talking about. I, I, I meant for that light to be right there. I think that um, a lot of times you get kind of a tunnel vision with your art and you have to be able to let people tell you what they see uh, or you're never going to get any better and I'm all about trying to improve so and forgive me because this is extremely rough don't uh, don't look at this artwork and think oh man that's the best that dude can draw this is just a thumbnail alright so establishing shot we've got the city you know, one thing I don't like about this city shot is it doesn't tell you enough about the city. It should have been pulled back even further. Um, so probably what I should have did here, and again, I'd start making notes and stuff. You know, pull shot back. And then, same here, pull this back. And then what it would do is it would pull this back and give a full establishing shot here then pull this back and be somewhat you know maybe a mid body shot of them and then the close up and that would make it more impactful it give more information of what kind of city this is where is he at you know what's you know more of a skyline and parts of it so you can see if it's a big city is it a small town you know things like that so um, is there water surrounding it or is it you know in the middle of the desert so you know things that you could convey with a more pan back shot Okay, so now the last one is what he actually sees. So um, let's say that he's looking out into the distance and he sees, I don't know, um, what could it be? Uh, a ship firing onto a building. Okay, so some alien craft has, you know, come up over the horizon and it's firing onto building and then this I guess will be kind of cover the fact that we didn't do the establishing shot the right way All right, when I say we I mean me because I'm the one doing this um, so I'll do like a, a cityscape real quick and again this is a thumbnail so it can be very you know choppy buildings in the front are going to be larger or you know closer are going to be larger and then maybe again you know it's always cool to do like one really up close building or something that helps you kind of frame the shot whatever like that and here we got the alien craft give us some weird little details I 
I'm not going to detail it all the way because honestly I would just that would be for again the next stage so then you got a building and it's it's blasted there's smoke rolling off it and just things like this where you would add little details maybe show some rubble coming off so that in the next stage you remember the idea that you were trying to convey it I mean not a, like I said not a whole lot of detail unless you're just having fun with it and you want to just keep adding that's essentially you know, maybe some drama lines dun, dun, dun. you know just like that so that is a thumbnail as silly as that is and as uh, quick and easy as that was um, that's how you convey it that's how you put it down like I said make yourself a lot of notes try to do uh, uh, overall shapes you know like kind of draw uh, some shapes inside there and go well that's kind of where my lights gonna stop and I'm gonna build this shape in here build this shape in there and it what what that does it makes it more pleasing to the eye of the viewer it sub um, subconsciously kind of pulls into their um, you know their mind's eye of, of um, I don't know being more aesthetic or more more uh, fun to look at or something next the thing that does that is all your you know your light sources making sure that they're correct uh, but building those shapes in there another fun little thing you can do when you do these panels and these designs is alright this is in a city get the alien shots down here maybe behind it we just do a couple buildings with the windows you know so like maybe there's this city shot behind all these panels you know just cool little fun things like that if it's not too distracting it can be it can be neat uh, but you do got to make sure it doesn't distract. So maybe you just do the black and white, uh, the um, the very silhouette style of the city back there, to uh, make it look kind of neat. Uh, and you know, make all kinds of notes there. You know, like like here, um, you know, do a dual light uh, dual light source for impact, and so you can throw in some cool shading. Um, yeah, so that's it. So that's a thumbnail, and hopefully that explains something for you. And uh, I just want to go through all the different variables when you make comics and what you come up with or the, the ways that I do it. And be sure to uh, check out the channel and check out more videos if you don't mind. Subscribe and like and share and all that good stuff. And uh, you can also see the Blackstone Eternal comic. You can see it on here. You can uh, buy yourself a copy from Indie Planet if you'd like. All those links are on the site here. I greatly appreciate you watching, and please put comments in there and let me know what you'd like to see in the future so I can keep bringing uh, better videos to you. Thanks very much for watching, and have a great day.